Hello again, I'm Mr. Brash. Welcome to my YouTube videos. This over here is Mr. Squirrel. He's going to be joining us. And today I'm going to be talking about quadratic relations, otherwise known as parabolas. And some people will call it quadratic equations. But in any event, what we're going to be doing is we're going to look at what happens when we square the x value like this. So if I had my equation of a line, y equals mx plus, you know, mx plus b, if I square the x here, what's going to happen to our graph? What does that do to our math? So we already know, or at least we should know, that the most basic line we could possibly have is a slope of 1 and, and a b or a y-intercept of 0. So y equals x. And so if we had a table of values and we said y equals x, it's as simple as our y values matching our x values, just like this. Okay, great. But what if we square the x values? If I take that negative 2, and I square negative two, what I end up with is positive four. Similarly, negative one squared, that'll be one. Zero squared is just zero. One squared is one and two squared is four. So look what that does to our graph now. I don't have any negative y values. And as a matter of fact, if we take a look at the graphs of these two things right here, this is the graph created from the table of values above, and this is the graph created from its table of values above. So this right here is the graph of y equals x squared, something that you're going to want to get used to, and this one's y equals x. And take a look at what it did. It created a curve. It created a very famous curve and a very important curve called a parabola, and we'll talk about that in a second. But at negative 2, if you, if you recall from the table of values, when I squared it, it became positive 4. And at positive 2, it became positive 4. At negative 1 was 1. At 1, it's also 1. And then, you know, if we went to 3, it would be up at 9. And if we went to negative 3, that would be up at negative, or sorry, positive 9. And it creates what we call a symmetric shape. It's the same on the left as it is on the right with some sort of imaginary mirror down the middle, kind of like a butterfly. And that's called a parabola. So let's just go through a couple definitions. Okay, so a parabola, that's the curve drawing I showed you before that comes from y equals x squared. And it has some very special characteristics, otherwise known as properties. And the shape actually comes from cutting a cone with a flat surface. So here we've got a cone. And if we cut a cone flat, like the horizontal line, you get a circle. If you angle it slightly, you get an ellipse. But if you follow the actual slope of the edge of the cone and make that a parallel cut with a flat surface, you get what's called a parabola right here. And then there's another one called a hyperbola. There's a, another half of the cone missing. Let's ignore the hyperbola for a second. But that shape right there is a perfect parabola, and it comes from cutting that cone. So the word parabola is for the shape. It's for the graph. But if we wanted to talk about the math behind it, like the equation y equals x squared up here, that is called a quadratic. So the relationship between y and x is happening in a quadratic fashion. Now, let's talk about that, that word quadratic. What, what exactly does that word quadratic mean? Okay, well, let's take x, for example. So if I just had simple old-fashioned x, that's a line. So if this was the length of x, here we go, there's my x. And if I had another line over here, and then it was also length x. So this is just one dimension and a one dimension. Well, if I also had another one here, perhaps I have another one here, and we connect all those, we've got a square because they're all the same length, x, 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 and x. And that's two dimensions. And if we wanted to get the area of this square here, we'd have to multiply x times x, which is known as x squared. What else do we know about the square? Well, we know that it has four sides. Can you think of another word that means four? So this is four sides, and the short form for four is quad. And so this equation being squared because it is a square sort of system is a quadratic, and that's sort of where the name comes from. It's certainly where I like to remember the name coming from, and so you can think of it like that. So if you have an equation that is squared, x squared, you've got a quadratic, or at least you probably have a quadratic. All right, so there's three ways to recognize if what you're looking at is a quadratic or a parabola, and the first way that I'm gonna focus on is the shape. We're gonna take a graph, and we're gonna talk about the key features or key properties of a parabola. And after that, we'll take a look at the equation and table of values. So when we have a parabola or a shape of a quadratic, we have something called a vertex. And if you think about triangles, back in the day you would have you know, had triangles and 
rectangles that you would have talked about ad nauseum because you're a good student. Those have vertices. So here we have a triangle. I've got a three vertices. Well, we have a single vertex for our parabola. So we have one vertex right here. I'll just highlight that in purple. There we go, nice and dark. And that one vertex is a very important point because the rest of the parabola grows downward or upward from that point. And so what my vertex is for this particular one here, I've got a vertex at four, two, four, two, and that's my vertex right here. Vertex, perfect. Now that vertex is at a special point called the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry is this fake vertical line that we don't see, and it goes right down the center of our parabola. On the left-hand side will be a mirror image of the right-hand side. So that is a really important vertical line. The equation of all vertical lines are just x equals. So for this particular one, I'm at x equals 4, and that's the statement that x is always 4. It's always the x value of your vertex as well. So when we write the axis of symmetry, we write it as an equation, not just the number x equals 4. And that tells me that everything to the left is going to be the same distance as it is to the right. And you can see I've got two points, one here and one here. Those are the next points I'm going to be talking about, the x-intercepts, and they are the same distance to the left and to the right as they are from the axis of symmetry. So they're two to the left and two to the right, and so that's really important. So those x-intercepts are crucial. You're going to be doing a lot with those x-intercepts in future math. Now let's take a look at my left hand zero or x-intercept or root. It goes by a couple different names depending on why you're looking at it and what you need it for. Well, that left hand one is at a point two, zero. The right hand one is also two points away from that axis of symmetry of four, and so that's at the point six, zero. And we can list it as coordinate pairs like this, separated by a comma, it, and that's the x-intercepts, or we can talk about it as the zeros. I would say x equals two and x equals six. I could also say x equals two or six. Some people will actually put the word or, so they might say x equals two or, x equals 6. So it just depends on how it is you want to say that. I find that when you put them comma separated like this, it's pretty easy to confuse that with a point. I like to see it in, in maybe with the word or in the middle or with x equals on both, just so that we're not getting confused with that coordinate system. Those points are going to be so crucial as we move forward in math. Next up is the direction of opening. There's a very special word in math called concavity. So think of a cave, and if we are opening upward, we think about the letter U, that is concave up. And so if I have a parabola that opens upward with arrows pointing upward, that is called concave up. Now this particular parabola, it does have arrows. They're going down forever and ever and ever. So this is a concave down parabola. So up is really easy to remember, right? Because the U just looks like the parabola down. The arrows are pointing downward. So this particular parabola is concave down. Next up is the maximum or minimum value, also known as the optimal value, and the word optimal means best, either best because we want a high value or best because we want a low value, and that can be, you know, golf scores versus income for finances and stuff like this. If it was, you know, your costs, you want to minimize your costs. If it's your profit, you want to maximize your profit. That maximum or minimum point can always be found at the, at the vertex here, right here, and it is the highest or lowest point that parabola will ever go. Because this is concave down, because it's pointing downward, it's actually going down to infinity. So some people would say, well, then infinity is, negative infinity is the best value. But I can't really give a number for negative infinity. If I was looking for the maximum profit for my company, it would be right up here at the vertex. And so this right here is a maximum optimal value. You can write this a couple different ways. You can say y equals, or you can just list it. So this one in particular is a maximum of two. So either y equals 2 or just 2 itself. If my parabola were opening upward, that would be a minimum value. So I'd have a vertex uh, that sort of hints at that for me. Last but not least is the y-intercept. This is something we've dealt with ever since you started graphing, really. So in, in this particular parabola, I've got a y-intercept of negative 6. Not particularly interesting for parabolas, not nearly as much as it was for lines. And we'll talk about that a little bit of moving forward, depending on what videos you watch and what you learn about parabolas. So those are the different properties of a parabola. I'll do an example at the end of this video that kind of lets you figure that out from another graph. 
All right, so that was the shape of a parabola. We've taken care of how to see it on a graph, but what if we don't have the graph and what we're really dealing with is the equation of the quadratic. So I've got four equations here and let's just take a look at what do we gather when we're looking at an equation. So the first equation, y equals 2x plus 5, that's very linear. I've got my mx plus b. And really importantly, super important is what is the exponent on the x value. In this case, my exponent is a one. And when we don't write it, it's an exponent of one. That's called the degree of an equation. So the highest exponent on the input variable, in this case, our x variable, and you'll you know just have to trust me on this one that it's gonna be x this go around. The degree is the highest exponent that we see on our x values in an equation. And sometimes they'll, they'll be hidden. And I'll talk about that in a second. So this next equation over here, while I do have a 4x at the beginning, if we keep going, I have a 9x squared. So my degree of this next one here, this is of degree two. This is a second degree equation, whereas this one was a first degree equation or a degree of one. This is a quadratic because of it. Because there is an x squared, and that is the highest exponent I see, that's a quadratic. Whereas this one over here, this is linear. This is a line. We've seen this before, mx plus b. Over here, we have a third degree equation because of my three. That's the highest exponent I see in this equation. That's actually called a cubic. So not a quadratic, not a linear. And then over here, the highest exponent I see here, this is a fourth degree equation, and that's called a quartic, but we don't, we don't really deal with that too, too much. And you might see that in maybe a sort of university level math. And like I said before, sometimes it's hiding. So if I had an equation similar to this, where I had x plus two and say x minus three, we'll just keep the numbers nice and simple. While this looks like a linear equation or a first degree equation, by the time you expand this out, multiply it all out, and I've got videos on that, you can definitely check that out. By the time we're done, we'll have this as an equation. And so we can see what I ended up with was a second degree equation. So this is actually quadratic. And if you've watched any of my videos on factoring and expanding, you would know that the first line here is the factored version of the second line. The second line is the expanded version of the first. And we're gonna be talking in future videos about this factored form and why it's so crucial to do with quadratics. All right, so we've dealt with the shape and we've dealt with taking a look at from an equation, how do we tell if it's quadratic? Really quickly, we're gonna talk about tables of values. Now, normally, you know, you're probably past the point of table of values, but let's just make sure we know how to tell if we have some data. So we've done the survey or we have some sort of data. How do we know if it's possibly quadratic? So let's just write down some values here. Let's take a look at my first table of values. I'll have a negative five for my y and then maybe negative two and then one, four and seven. And hopefully you're following along. You can write this down on your own. Now you may or may not know this, but if you take what we call the first differences of the y values, we can figure out if this is linear. So if I subtract my y values and you want to start at the bottom, so I'm not going to have a value down here. There's not going to be an answer in this box here. But if I subtract seven, take away four. So if I say seven, take away four, seven, take away four is three. Now what's four, take away one, four, take away one, also three. And one, one, take away negative two. Well, that's also three and negative two, take away negative five. You guessed it. That's three. So because my first differences are all the same, what I end up with in this particular example is this is a linear equation. So this right here, this is linear because my first differences were all constant. Now let's do a second example that's pretty much set up for exactly what you think it would be, but let's write some values in our, in our y column here. So three, zero, three, 12 and 27. So if this was the data that we had from some sort of situation and we wanted to know if it was linear or quadratic, we would go ahead and we would do our first differences. You'll not have an answer for your first box here. And 27 take away 12 is 15. 12 take away three is nine, three take away zero is three, and zero take away three is negative three. Now, because these values are all different, we can certainly say that this is not linear. This will not draw a straight line. If we wanted to now see if perhaps it was quadratic, we would do our second differences. So 
we're going to take our differences of the differences. So what's 15 take away 9? 15 take away 9 is 6. 9 take away 3, also 6. And 3 take away negative 3 is also 6. So because my second differences are all the same, this is quadratic. And that has to do with the degree that I spoke about before. This is going to be a second degree equation. And so if your second differences are all constant, you know you're dealing with a quadratic, or at least possibly or probably a quadratic. Okay, the last thing I'd like to do in this video is just take a look at the key features of some parabola that we have right here. You might want to pause the video and see if you can remember what all the key features of a parabola are and try to list them yourself. So in no particular order necessarily, but I am going to start with the vertex, similar to what I started with before. The vertex of this parabola is found at the point where it turns around to go back in the other direction. So this is at a point of 1, negative 9. So in this case, 1, negative 9 is my vertex. If I wanted to then talk about the axis of symmetry, it makes sense to talk about that next because it's really right off of the vertex. It really does come right off that vertex value. You don't have to draw this dotted line on your own graphs. I'm just drawing it for my own sake here. So my axis of symmetry, actually I'll just write it like this. So axis, my axis of symmetry is an equation. It's a vertical line. In this case, it is x equals and the x value of the vertex, one. Next up, one of the features you might want to talk about are the x-intercepts, otherwise known as the zeros, depending on how you want to write that out. x-intercepts, x-intercepts, otherwise known as zeros. We'll be calling it that a lot. So I've got one over here at negative 2 and one over here at 4. So my x-intercepts are negative 2, 0, and 4, 0. And if I was to write that as the zeros, I would say x equals negative 2 and x equals 4 if I was talking about them as zeros. So it's another feature that we talked about in previously in the video. So let's talk about the concavity. Is this concave up or concave down? So this one opens upward. My arrows at the end of the parabola being drawn here are pointing up to the sky. So this one here, this is a concave up parabola. This opens up. So some people write opens up. They might say upward. And this is how I wrote it. This is a concave up parabola. Let's talk about maybe the y-intercept for a second. Not necessarily the most interesting feature, but my y-intercept is easily visible to me. It is at negative 8. So I've got a y-intercept of negative 8. You can write it like this. You can write it as the point 0, negative 8. That's totally up to you. And is there one more feature that I should be mentioning? There is. It's the optimal value, so whether this opens up or down or what have you. So let's just write optimal value, optimal value. And in this case, my optimal value is down here. This is my optimal value right there. Kind of link it up to my writing. And that's the lowest it'll ever go. The highest it'll ever go is infinity, plus 1, plus 2, plus 3, plus 4 times infinity to the power of infinity. It'll just keep going. But the lowest it can ever go here is at negative 9. And so my optimal value, this is a minimum, minimum, minimum of negative 9 or y equals negative 9. Now that can come from the y value of your vertex as well. And those are the key features of this parabola. So in a nutshell, that's quadratics or parabolas, quadratic relations. I'm going to be talking more about this and creating more videos and posting them up on my YouTube channel. As always, if you think I made a mistake or if you have some constructive criticism or something you want to say, please leave a comment. I'd love to uh, reply and, and use that to inform my future videos. If you're interested in subscribing to my channel, sure, why not? Go for it. And as I've said before, this is Mr. Squirrel and he approves this video. Have yourself a wonderful day and keep practicing math.